Hello, and welcome back to another video. In my previous video, I showed you how to set up Diesel ORM with an existing Actix Web API and an existing Postgres database. Today, I'm going to show you how to use SQLX as an alternative to Diesel. So for starters, we need a .env set up with a database URL variable, and this will contain your Postgres connection information. Next, we need to install uh, SQLX as a dependency. We're going to use the following features. Runtime, async, standard, native, TLS, and Postgres. Oh. Perfect. Next, Moving into our main.rs, you can see here that we have three service uh, factories here. We have fetch users, fetch user articles, and create user article. In order to create our Postgres pool connection, we will need to first grab web data from Actix Web, and then from SQLX, we will need to import Postgres PG pool options, pool, and Postgres. We need to define our app state that we will pass to each route. State DB, and this will be a pool of Postgres. And for actually creating our pool, we will first need to grab our database URL env variable from our env file. Database URL. And we will expect that it's set. For the pool, we will need to use a new uh, PG pool options. We will set max connections to five. Connect, and we pass it the database URL. Await and expect that it is set or connected. Error building a connection pool. Lastly, we need to expose the uh, our app state to our routes. So app data new and pass it app state and db will be set to our pool.clone. That takes care of main.rs. Next Moving into our services file, you can see our three routes, get users, get user articles, and post user articles. To start out, we will need to import data from web again, as well as HTTP response. From SQLX, we'll need to import self and from row. From row allows SQLX to actually use the structs that we'll be defining as return types for the queries. And the last thing to import will be, uh, well, second to last, we need serialize from CERD and we need to import app state from main.rs. The first returnable that we will create is user. So this is what we will be using for fetch users. And we need it to be serializable and usable as a query return. Struct user, and this will have an ID of i32, first name, and last name.
The other uh, returnable that we need is going to be an article. We will use that for both fetch user articles and create user articles. Article. This will have an ID as well, a title, content, and a created by value. And this is a user ID. Perfect. Moving into the actual routes, we need to, in all of them, we are going to want to specify state as data app state. Move that extra. And then for get users, uh, we'll follow a match pattern. SQL X, query as, and the return type will be user. The actual query is written in the parentheses. We want to select ID, first name, and last name from users. Finally, fetch all. This will return a vector of the return type that we've specified, so a vector of users. And we will pass in state.db. And finally, wait. Now, diesel would break out its, re, uh, its responses for this match as OK and we found users, and then OK we didn't find any users, and then error. For this, it will just return OK, the connection was made, we were able to make the query, here's what we found, or something went wrong, here's an error. So we'll handle those. So for the happy path, OK users, and we will just send back what SQLX was able to find. For an error, we'll send back not found and send no users found. And that takes care of get users. For fetch user articles, follow the same pattern, match SQL X, query as, and the return type will be article this time. For the actual query, select ID, title, uh, content, and created by from articles where created by equals dollar sign one. So the dollar sign one uh, specifies a, uh, a variable that will be put in. So this is like a substi uh, substitution string. We will use the bind method to replace the dollar sign one with the ID that we've pulled from the path. And once again, we will fetch all and state.db and await. Okay, articles, HTTP response, okay, and send back the articles. Otherwise, we want to send back not found again. And that takes care of the user articles route. Lastly, for the create user article, we are going to have a return type of article again because we are creating an article and then sending back the newly created article. Insert into articles title content created by the following values 
dollar sign one, dollar sign two, dollar sign three. Returning ID, title, content, and created by. Once again, we need to bind the values that will be passed into these substitutes. So, first one is body.title.string, uh, to string. Second one is body.content.toString. And lastly, we want to pass in the user ID that we again pulled from the path. In this case, we are going to use fetch1. So instead of returning a vector of articles, this will just be a single vector, uh, sorry, single article object. And state.db. Oh wait. And again, we want to send back the response. So the newly created article in this case. And if something went wrong in this case, we want to return an internal server error saying uh, failed to, to create user article. Perfect. Let's whirl this up. And it's running. Let's head over to Thunder Client. I've got a few HTTP requests set up here. So on the first one, get users, returns John Smith and Jane Smith, as I, we would expect. For get user articles for the first user, John Smith, send, and we get back the different articles. So in this case, one, two, three, and 10. Uh, for user articles for user two, we get back four, five, six, and seven. And if we change this, super original, some other really great article to be determined. We send it for user one. We get back the newly created article. And if we go back to fetch user articles for user one, we see that it exists still. So perfect. Our API is connected to our Postgres database using SQLX. If you found this helpful or interesting, please remember to leave a like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.